Welcome to Titan Machine Tool. We got a little different something happening here today. Okay, a little different something, kind of like a PSA, public service announcement, right? Let the buyer beware, warning, warning. I'm gonna give you some information here that hopefully will save you lots of time and problems because not everybody knows what goes on here, but we do machine shop work and we try to be precise and when we're not precise, we try to figure out why we're not precise. You know, you can't fix, you can't remedy the problem if you don't know what the problem is. So when things ain't coming out the way they're supposed to, you gotta kind of figure out what's going on. So I didn't just figure this out now. I figured this out a long time ago, unfortunately. I've been dealing with this problem for a long time, but we'll, we're getting it fixed. We're resolving the problem as time goes by, right? So here we go today. Now, anybody that goes out there and wants to buy themselves a used machine, I suggest you do this, you know? You test it out, let the buyer beware, take it for a test drive, make sure it's gonna do what you want it to do. But check this out, make, just, this is one test you're gonna wanna make sure you do because if you don't and you get it home and you wanna start doing some precise work, well, then you gotta kinda like do other things in order to get to where you need to be. So if you wanna not compound problems, beware and pay attention to this, all right? So what we got happening here is, is as time goes by, I could write a song about that, as time goes by, as the sands of the hourglass pass, and you do work, right? You got your, you got your lubricator down here, your squirty, your one-shot lube, right? Or you got your uh, automatic lube if it's electric, boogie, woogie, woogie. And it, and it lubricates everything for you, right? It's lubricating everything for you. So you can see we got some leakage that's coming out. So you're like, all right, everything's good. Well, maybe not so much. So this is what happens, all right? You know in Gotham City, you got that villain, the penguin, right? I'm not gonna name any products, but you got that villain, the penguin in Gotham City. And when you use the penguin juice, you get my drift? When you use the penguin juice, because the penguin juice works pretty good, especially when you like to leave your machines alone and let them run unattended, pushes all the chips away, keeps the tool cool, right? It's advertised as it doesn't rust, safe for all your machines. That may be true, but you need to keep your machine clean. And when you do a lot of work all the time and you're keeping busy, most of us don't keep our machines as clean as we should. So when we don't keep our machine as clean as we should and we use penguin juice, well, this could happen to you. Don't be surprised. So what happens is, is when the water evaporates and the gooey is left behind, it's kind of gooey, the gooey is left behind, debris, debris sticks to the gooey. Microscopic levels all over the machine, okay? We got some on the machine, okay? So you gotta clean it up, you gotta clean it up. But like I said, we don't, we, we don't, you know, cleanliness is godliness. We don't all, uh, we don't all aspire to the standards of God. So anyways, your machine gets dirty. You clean it. You're like, all right, I'm keeping it clean. You know, in the front, you say, hey, it looks good. Looks good in the front. Look, I can see lube. Everything's happening as it's supposed to, all right? Well, not so much in the back, okay? Not so much in the back. And what happens is, right? I've been, I've been going on a lot, but the point I'm making here is, is the gooey gets between the table and the saddle. And when you clean it in the front here, because your machine looks nice, you wanna try to keep it clean. It's easy to clean, it's easy to wipe. You can see when it's dirty, you clean it. Not so much in the back. So what happens is, is the gooey, when the water evaporates, gets between your table and your saddle. What it does is it starts getting dragged back and forth. And all the crap over that sticks to it gets dragged back and forth with it, okay? Well, in between the table, the table and the saddle, we got our lubrication ports, right? We saw some oil coming out there. We know it's plumbed in the saddle, the, the one-shot lube. 
Well, what happens is, is all that crapola gets into the lubricating port and it blocks the one shot lube, blocks it up. So the backside of the machine does not get the proper lubrication it's supposed to because it gets all crappy down there. Even when we think we're keeping it, keeping it clean, it's crappy. So now what happens is, is when you have a machine like this one and you have tersite, see, we're gonna expose it here. We got the tersite exposed. Right? Oh, you can see, if you can see, you're gonna know where I'm getting at here. What happens is, is the lubrication doesn't work as it's supposed to, all right? And you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what happens is the backside of the saddle, the tersite on the backside of the saddle literally gets worn to hell. Literally worn to hell. And you, and you run a ridge in it. And what happens is, is your table starts to tip. Starts to tip. And I'm going to show you. Red zero right here, okay? I'm going to run off the parallel. This is all good. Now, Don't this, this is not because I got accumulative error in my stack up. The blocks are within tenths. The parallels are within two tenths. So for the purposes of this test, it's not because the head's out. It's not because I got the table all the way down at one end, okay? It doesn't matter where I do it. If I do it at the end, if I do it in the middle, I just don't want to do it in the middle because I'm still set up. I got a job set up there, so. I just put it down here on the end, right? This is gonna happen no matter where you do it. It doesn't matter that I got it hanging off the end here. What happens is, as you will see, I'm gonna run off the indicator so you can see, right? Zero. Okay, back to zero. Now what happens is, as you run down the parallel, I ran out of parallel, I didn't have it straight there. Terrible test, terrible, Bob. You, doing a terrible job here. Come back again, zero, right, zero. Had the parallel crooked so the indicator ran right off of it. Look at that, okay, what do we got? 10 thousandths, that's a 12 inch parallel. So we get 10 thousandths dip, dip. Even a little more than that probably. 10 to 11 thousand dip in the table. The table's canted, it's tipped. I don't know if I do it that way, that's the way it looks. I gotta do the camera the other direction, right? The table's tipped like that, 10 thousands. And it's even more than that, you know why? Because I got some compensation going on here. Because the machines, you know, th these machines were, I got two of them, the same exact thing. One's two axis, one's three axis. They're both pr brand new, 2006. They were bought brand new in 2006, okay? but. So they're tw like 20 years old almost. So they got some wear on them. They're in good condition. Well, I say that, I take that back. They're not in good condition, okay? I'm the only one that's essentially run them since they were new. But anyways, they're both the same thing, okay? You got 10 thousands dip in the table right there. But I know for certain that this knee, the knee right there, this knee is sagging. It's sagging. So what happens is, is from going up and down all the time, up and down all the time, up and down all the time, with the table out here most of the time, okay? Nobody, nobody works with their table tucked up over here like they should. Everybody's gotta work with it out here. You got parts hanging off, you got your vise on there and whatnot. So you got the thing running out here a lot of times and the weight is hanging way out here. So it's causing the knee to do this. Burp. And what it does is, is down bottom over here, it galls the bottom of the column. So if you crank your knee all the way up to the tippity top, as far up as it goes, and you go down there and you look at that and you check it out, you're probably gonna see some galling. I did, that's how I know. Crank them all the way up, look at the column, you'll see some galling. So what happens is, is that galling on the bottom, the column wears out a little bit, right? So that whole, the whole knee does this, burp like that so you got sag in the knee in the front right there so the sag in the knee doing this is actually compensating for the dip in the back a little bit so I actually probably have more than 10 or 11 thousandths in 12 inches 
because it's gonna. I bet you. I bet you. There's like at least two or three thousand sag in the knee right there. If you take, if you tightened up the, if you crank the knee all the way up to the top and move the saddle all the way in and center the table, and you tighten up on the gibs, take up some of that, the slop in the gib. You might be able to get some of that, some of that galling sag out. You know, a couple, a couple thousands probably. But but anyways, so I got. 10 thousands dip in 12 inches. So if you're gonna go buy a machine, you better make sure you check that out because it, it is not cheap to fix this, okay? It is not cheap. You know how I know? Because I did. Both machines, this machine, these are sharp, what are these, TVMs? Is that what these things are called? A sharp TVM. These are, these are big machines, okay? That's a sharp TVM. And it happened, the, the one shot lube is, is uh, let's put it this way, not as good as it should be. Because both machines, this one too, did the exact same thing, exact same spot. The furthest port, all right, there's no metering valves in it, these things, that's the problem. These machines have no metering valves. I got one over there, that's a Kent. That has metering valves in the lubricating system, okay? So it apportions the oil and dumps it where it needs supposed to be. So there's no tuned port header system in this thing with the, with the lines. So the minute you pump this thing, the closest points, like right here, it starts, it starts dumping out right away and you start losing pressure. So by the time you want it to get all the way down here to this back corner over here, it's got no juice. And I know because both machines had the same exact problem. The far back lubricating port essentially wasn't even working. It's completely blocked up with crap. And then from the penguin juice and all the junk grabbing on the dovetail and, and being dragged in there completely ruined the tersite. So I had to fix this one. I had to have this one fixed. Oh God, that was not, look at this though. Ooh, 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 sex, sexy, look at that. Like brand new, okay? So not only do they have to fix the tersite underneath the machine, you gotta take this whole thing apart, all of it, all of it apart. The saddle, the table, you gotta take it all apart. They remove all the bad tourist site underneath, bond the new stuff on, drill the lubricating holes, scrape them, make sure they're square and parallel to the saddle. And when they do that, because not only does the tourist site get ruined, the underside of the table, you know, this is a ground surface under here, the underside of the table gets completely trashed as well. So you're not gonna have a crappy ass surface underneath your table on brand new fresh tersite when you're spending the kind of money you need to spend to do it. So, oh, oh, oh look at that. Like brand new, all reground, top and bottom. Reground all the underside of the table as well. Yes, yes, yes. All brand new tersite on this machine right here. So this, this baby, whoo hoo, this baby's tight now. And I know about the column because when I put it back together, the table was tipping the wrong way. It was tipping backwards this way after it was all rebuilt. And I'm like, WTF here? Yeah. So anyways, that's what it was. It's the, the knee. I tightened up the gibbs, boop, straightened it out. Table perfectly flat now. Zero, zero, right across the table this way. Both ends, knee up, knee down, doesn't matter. So if you've got a machine that you need, the table reground, all new tersite, I know a guy, I could get that, I could hook you up. I can hook you up with some of the best people that do this stuff, all right? They can do big stuff too. They, they can redo a table like this, 16 feet long. So if you got a big planer mill, 16 foot table and you need the whole thing reground and make it look like this, oh, sexy, sexy. Yeah, you give me a contact and I'll hook you up. Look at those brand new vices too, oh my God. Sexy machine, woohoo! I'll let you check that out in the next video right there. Ever see that? Woohoo! Old school. But anyways, yeah. So when you use penguin juice, clean your machine, keep it well lubricated. Because if you don't, you're gonna be in for it. You are gonna be in for it. And your table's gonna tip. You're gonna have a crooked ass table because your tersite is gonna shit the bed. I'll crank it over there and expose it. Look, exposed. 
Look at that, you see, there's the, they had to redo all of that. They got to recut all the lubricating channels in the tersite after they put it back on. You know, look at the, you can see, see this one's pretty clean. That one's, you can almost, you can almost see the scraping, the original scraping on it. That one's pretty clean still. This back one is, is rubbish. Rubbish. And, and I blame it on, so, you know, it's, it's my fault for not keeping the machine as clean as it should. But I blame it on an inherent flaw in the lubricating system because there's no metering valves in this thing to proportion the oil and distribute it properly. But the biggest culprit of all is the penguin juice, in my opinion. But anyways, there we go. Watch out. When you go buy a new machine or you're buying a used machine, make sure you do that test and test it and check it or you're going to have a crooked table. And if you've got a crooked table, you know what you need to do? If you ain't got no money to fix it or you don't want to be bothered fixing it. The easy, the easy remedy is bolt an aluminum plate to the table, bolt it right on, counter bores, you know, he screws below the surface and essentially cut it. Recut the table, recut the whole plate, fly cut it or whatever. And then at least it'll be, at least, at least it'll be square to the, t to the head, you know? It'll be parallel, you have a, a parallel table there. I mean, you got a long plate or a long bar on there like this and over there you're minus 30 and over here you're plus 20 when the table's all crooked ass like that. So at least if you put a plate on it like that and you cut the plate, cut the aluminum plate, then at least you'll have a, a flat plane that you can put your work on and work off of it. That's the cheap way of fixing it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing a, I got a, a one and three quarter inch round piece of material that I'm holding in there. It's 13 inches long and I'm drilling a quarter inch hole, blind quarter inch hole, 12 and three quarter inches deep. So I needed to make sure everything was pretty straight. The, the chances of drill walk are, are pretty high when you're drilling 12 and three quarter inches deep and you're not gun drilling. So that's what that setup's for right there. That's what I was doing over there. So I wanted to make sure everything was nice and square and straight and whatnot. So put your parallel in here first. Shim it, set it zero, zero all the way across and then tram your head. Then tram the head so that the head is nice and square and then go down and cut your aluminum plate. You know, I try to, I try to go as far as the uh, machine limits, travel machine limits allow me to do. So this, this happened to be a scrap piece of material I had on there, but I bolted that baby down. And then right in here, you can see this, this little step down area right here. I milled that all back and forth, back and forth like that. So when I put the knee on, I had a flat plane to start with, because I know that knee is, it's, it looks old and beat up, but it's a taft pass, it's its square within two tenths. I've checked it with my comparative square. So I know that's pretty good. That's within two tenths and eight inches of height. Uh, I don't think the drill's gonna walk because of the pot being crooked, you know, 12 inches deep. But anyways, that's what we got going on there. So you wanna mitigate all the potential error before you try to make things straight and square. And when your table's crooked as crooked can be, uh, you're chasing, you're chasing your error. So bad tersite, bad lubrication, bad penguin juice, bad penguin juice. All right, that's it for today. 18 minutes of a bunch of nonsense, but hey, I'm telling you, better to know this ahead of time than go. Yeah, I almost went to go buy one. I thought I was gonna score myself an awesome new machine. I was looking at a uh, Prototrack K3 with uh, an SLX control on it, three axes, two axes, three axes, no. Two axis with electronic hand wheel. Yeah, so it was a three axis. It was a three axis, yeah. Prototrack K3 SLX. But anyways, I had the same problem as this. They did a lot of G10 and they used the water soluble G10. So you know that stuff is like dust. It got in there and it trashed the backside of the turrets. Like same thing, I did this test when I went to go buy the machine and I'm like, dude, look, your turrets site's crap. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, look at your table's tipped. It's crooked as fuck. I can't buy this machine because it costs too much, even though you're giving me a deal on it. He's like, oh my God, I didn't even know. So there you go. But I only got it on the blocks because I didn't want to crank the knee up. You can just check the table. Just put your indicator across the table and check it. And if she's crooked, use that as a bargaining chip to get it for cheaper because it's going to cost you a lot of money to fix it. But then you can get the deal and just put an aluminum plate on it and cut the aluminum plate and you'll be okay. All right, Titan Machine Tool signing off. Thank you for watching. Over and out.